I'm Brian DeLuca and this is Maker Build It and today we're talking about the art of articulation in 3D prints. We're going to discuss one of the most important joints in 3D printing and we're going to show you how to make it. But before we do that, make sure you like and follow. <laughs> Articulating joints are crucial to making 3D printed toys more interactive and dynamic. They bring toys to life, allowing for movement and posing of the actual 3D printed toys for display purposes. There are various types of joints used in creating plastic toys, but how can they be implemented in 3D printing? These joints range from everything from ball and socket joints to hinge joints to even swivel joints. One of the most commonly used joints in 3D printing is the chain joint. They are used in almost every flexi dragon you've ever seen or many other articulating sort of 3D printed toys. The chain joint is one of the simplest joints out there, but let's discuss what it is and how it functions. Now imagine you're designing this articulating dragon and it has a long tail with all the segmented pieces. Each segment allows for a small range of movement, but collectively they allow the tail to bend, twist, and move naturally. Chain joints, often referred to chain links or link joints, function similarly as a series of interconnected hinge or pivot joints allowing sequential flexible movement along a path. These type of joints can be seen in toys with segmented flexible parts such as flexi dragons, but they could also be used in a wide range of other 3D printed toys. Now let's take a look at how to make a flexi joint. I'm gonna do this in Nomad Sculpt. I'm gonna use a goblin head I designed that I've wanted to really turn into a flexi for quite some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a neck real quick using a cylinder. That way we have something to attach the chain joint to. I didn't want it just sticking out of the back of his head. Next I'm going to make his upper chest. Now I'm going to design an upper torso. I'm just using a square here for this demonstration. Now once I get sort of everything in place, um, where I want the neck and sort of where I want the body, I'm going to use a chain joint to connect the two pieces. We're going to add a torus, and as you can see here, I'm just going to move the body out of the way for a second so we could actually move this torus, and you can see it. Now, now we're going to actually make this the width of the neck. So we're just moving the inner radius and basically the outer radius until we're getting it to the correct size. And then we're just going to bring it up into the neck. And we're going with the thickness we think is gonna work well with this model. Now, if we were really making this design, we would make this a more solid thing. It wouldn't just look like a chain. It would be a print in place and it would be flat cut on the back of this actual model. So we would make it look like a real part of the neck. Once we have it in place, we're going to clone that torus and we're just going to move it slightly. Then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's interlocking. Now, you should always examine your pieces close up because you want to make sure they're not touching each other. That way, when you 3D print them, there is some space in between them. Now, like I said, if we were doing this for the actual model, we would build this more like a printed place and this would be flat against the surface. This is just to show you how to create a chain joint. Now once we're happy with where the chain joint is, we're going to move the body into place and make sure everything's lined up. Now we're going to inspect our chain one last time, make sure there's enough gapping in there. So I'm pretty happy with where everything is laid out. I'm going to export this STL. Let's get it printed on the Bamboo Lab Carbon and let's see how the joint works. The joint actually looks pretty good and you can see it's thick enough. I mean, this is about the size I would make this flexi. Um, obviously, once again, a lot more design needs to go into this, but this was just for the tutorial of making the joint. When incorporating articulating joints in the 3D printed toys, several factors should be considered to ensure flexibility and durability. 
Each segment should be designed with interlocking features that allow for pivoting and hinging movement. Ensure proper clearance between segments to prevent them from being too tight or too close. By utilizing chain joints, toy designers can actually make very articulating and flexible 3D printed toys. And this just enhances the playability or realism to the actual 3D print. But chain joints may not be the right joint for your project. We're going to make other videos exploring other type of articulating joints, such as a ball joint, which is good for a head, an arm, or a leg on a 3D printed toy. We'll also explore hinge joints that allow for great 3D printed movement if you want like your items to say for instance sit or bend at the knee. So make sure to follow Maker Build It for other 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects and remember, keep on making.